Um, so Eric is the founder of Jack.org, like I mentioned. Um, it's the largest youth-led mental health charity in the country. Um, I, like I said, get to see a lot of him because I also work with the organization, um, but he's been running it for seven years now. Uh, yeah, a little longer. I'll get into that. <laughs> you'll get into that a bit more, but um, you'll hear a lot more about Jack Dorg and how he started it. Um, the founder chat is really just a short conversation with a founder. Uh, we have two of them today. The second one will be with Lisa Hayden. But yeah, we'll get to hear a lot more about how Eric started Jack.org, why he started Jack.org, and where, like, how it's grown to where it is today. So I've heard this story quite a few times, but I love to hear it every time. So. Uh, Rachel and John, can you see my screen okay? You can't see it yet. You can't John, see it yet. You might be able to help out a little bit more. Now, one second. Yeah, we can't see it yet. You have the option to share it though. Uh, yeah, let me just. That's okay. It's been a day full of technical difficulties, but um, this is our first time doing the summit digitally. So, and there we go. We've got the screen shared now. Sweet. I'll give you a second. How's that? Uh, yep, that's perfect. All right. Okay, so wonderful. So, shall I take it away, Rachel? Go. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, following up on our our uh, fun chat last week. Um, I'm gonna to try to manage my time a little bit better today, Rachel, but I do wanna let everybody know I'm actually much closer to you this week. I'm at a little fishing village in Nova Scotia. Uh, and as I look out the window, I'm looking across at Cape Breton, all of which is to say I'm kind of home. I'm a Nova Scotia uh, born and raised, um, but our internet signal is not quite as stable as it is uh, uh, in bigger cities. So I hope it works out okay. And if I do need to mute the slides, let me know and I'll just chat to you all, okay? Um, so um, given the context here, uh, founder chat, I wanted to just talk a little bit about my background uh, as an entrepreneur. I mentioned I'm born in Halifax. Uh, I was actually raised across Canada. Uh, but very early in my life, I got exposed to opportunities to be entrepreneurial. Uh, and I guess I, I, I founded my paper route. That was my first ever, uh, first ever job, which was when I was 11. I was delivering papers at uh, 5.30 in the morning. Uh, that was when I was living near Ottawa at that time. But uh, uh, that kind of got me interested in, 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 in business and being in business. And that led to a real first business I founded when I was about 17, just finishing high school, I founded a paint contracting business and employed a few of my friends and, uh, uh, you know, earned some money to go off to university. And uh, I wasn't one of those young people that, you know, get all their university financed. I actually had to, to earn money and I found it to be a uh, twofold benefit, but it taught me how to be, uh, be in business for myself. And it also helped me uh, make some money. So I just want to give a little context that when we founded Jack.org, uh, I had already had some history as a founder. I went into university at Queens, took a business degree, uh, started at a consulting firm called Accenture, but really it was uh, all about trying to learn different businesses so I could go into business for myself. Um, and that's what I did. I spent, uh, um, started a, a steel fabrication company with uh, uh, my initial partner, and then he and I morphed that into an automotive business, which grew quite large. We had uh, 12 factories and 2,000 employees at our peak. Uh, and then in 2003, we, we sold that business, and I quickly transitioned into another startup, which was a, a kind of a tech startup, more in the e-commerce software space. But it really uh, was a total change. I wanted a total change. Uh, taught me so many things that have benefited our work uh, at Jack.org. Um, and that's where my life really took a, a massive change. So for those who don't know, uh, Jack.org is a youth mental health charity. Uh, it was founded by myself and my wife. After uh, uh, the tragedy that our family went through, we lost our son Jack in March of 2010 to suicide. And uh, we didn't know anything about mental health, really. I would say we're very average in that respect. We didn't even know Jack was struggling. Um, and uh, uh, we figured, you know, after we kind of picked ourselves up off the ground, that uh, uh, if this could happen to us, it, it could really happen to anybody. And we really decided to see what we could do about it. 
And so I never went back to that so so software startup, which was up and running at that time. We had grown to maybe 15 employees and we were finally profitable and all the things that startups go through. Um, but I did turn my skills to founding another type of organization, which I really had no experience with. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, I guess, something that I wanted to mention as a lesson learned for all founders uh, is that it really helps uh, if, if you have a, a, a real passion for what you're going into. And trust me, way back when I had a passion for learning how to do the best work in automotive, and I had a passion for that software startup, nothing like the passion I've had for the mental health space and youth mental health in particular. But I think it's a real critical thing that founders really need because you need to go all in if you're gonna be successful uh, as a founder and uh, apply all the skills, apply all the learning you can. But uh, um, my background, I guess, suffice to say, helped prepare me uh, for this opportunity uh, that came across our, our, our lives uh, after the tragedy we went through. And I just wanted to mention, uh, mention that a little bit as some of the, one of the important things, I think. You just need to have that passion because if you're going to be successful, you need to be all in. Uh, so quickly, just looking back at the evolution of Jack.org, and I'm going to touch on why this is important uh, when you're founding an, uh, an organization. Uh, we didn't just go and immediately start a charity. We actually partnered initially back in 2010 and 2011 uh, with Kids Help Phone, a national charity that was already established. And we raised our money and actually started a fund uh, called the Jack Project at Kids Help Phone. Um, and we did a pilot study, uh, took about two years to really find our, our ground and our feet. Uh, and that turned out to be this youth engagement, youth leadership model in mental health. And then we tested that model at Queens uh, before we started the charity in the summer of 2013, uh, known as Jack.org. Uh, and what I really wanted to mention about that is uh, it, it's so important um, that you, you, you kind of scan the field, you figure out where you can contribute, whether that's a, you know, a tech startup, uh, any kind of social enterprise, a charity, whatever it might be, uh, you really need to understand what's out there in the way of competition, where the opportunities to contribute are, and that's going to give you a much better chance of being successful as a founder uh, with your organization. Um, we now, uh, as you can see, have grown to a staff of uh, 47 full-time employees, um, and we have about 3,000 young people, uh, many of them superstars like Rachel, who, who help do our work, and we actually do our work through these young leaders. Uh, we are based in Toronto, but we have something that I'll talk about in a moment called Jack Chapters all across the country, uh, and those are super important. Um, uh, because they, their work we do in those communities across the country. So yes, we're based in, you know, uh, the center of center of Canada in some respects. Uh, as a maritimer, we we always joked, oh yeah, Toronto, center of the universe. Uh, but uh, uh, that just happens to be where we lived when we started this organization. Our work really happens in every province and territory all across the country. So as the founder, what are the lessons learned? You really need to test your model a little bit. You need to understand the competition. Uh, you need to evaluate what you're doing to make sure it's really making a difference uh, and really keep focused at all times on your customers. So our customers are different than let's say a tech startup. Uh, you know, our customers are really young people who are trying to educate about mental health and connect them to resources and help them take action in their own communities, that sort of thing. But the same uh, principles, I think, really, really apply. Uh, just uh, quickly, I'll just touch on our key programs. Uh, we train and certify youth speakers to give Jack Talks all across the country. We have groups of young leaders who, who band together at high schools, colleges, and universities and create something called Jack Chapters, and they try to educate their peers about mental health all year long. And then we train our young leaders at Jack Summits. Uh, and we've actually even had some experience at virtual events like this. Our national summit this uh, past March actually had to be deferred because of COVID, and we, we uh, made it happen in early May, and we had 250 delegates participating from all across Canada virtually. Uh, so that's where we bring young people together to connect and, and learn from one another, send them back to their communities more empowered to do their work. Um, and a whole uh, group of these young people is what we call our youth network. 
And I just wanted to mention this all as background because uh, it's helped us to really develop uh, some really focused uh, key, uh, if, if you like, our services uh, as a charity or, or our products, if you want to call it that way, uh, are these, these three programs in particular. Uh, and the way we deliver it through our young leaders is, is super important um, because peer-to-peer -peer education and mental health is, is vitally important. Uh, it won't be the same in most businesses, I understand that, but you have to figure out what will work for your business. Um, and then just quickly, I wanted to talk about our foray into digital. Um, we were learning from young people that they wanted to find ways to support uh, all the young people who were, who were asking for support. And we didn't want to turn them into mental health counselors, uh, but just give them some skills for how to be there for one another in, and lean into these tough conversations, how to recognize signs and symptoms of mental health struggle, et cetera. Uh, but also behind this was really an opportunity to expand our reach through digital technologies. And so this was kind of an evolution of our model. And it's, uh, as you can imagine, paying uh, particular dividends in these COVID times because most of our in-person work, our talks, chapters, and summits are somewhat on hold right now uh, because in-person gatherings are not not on for the time being, uh, but uh, we're doing much more of our work on all of our programs uh, digitally and still trying to reach young people and support them. Um, so I encourage you to, to if, you, if you wanna learn about mental health, because we all have mental health, uh, some of us will struggle with a mental illness, but we all need to be there for our friends. I encourage you to check out our, our website at jack.org, but also uh, uh, the website at be there.org. Uh, terrific resources that really have extended our reach and and kept us focused on our mission of, of helping the lives of young people. So what's next for us and some things I wanted to mention here, uh, lessons learned from my business career. Um, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, often you're doing most of the work initially, you can gradually afford to hire a few people, uh, but you're always kind of uh, blocking and tackling, so to speak, the things that are right in front of you. And I can honestly say in like 25 plus years of entrepreneurship, we never paused enough to really do a thoughtful strategic plan. But we have done that at jack.org from the start. Um, in 2013-14, we started writing our first strategic plan. Uh, we completed that uh, in 2019 and uh, it took 2020 to largely uh, uh, sort of our fiscal year 2020, which uh, had already started the time last year, uh, took that time to really get our next strategic plan in place. And I really want to emphasize how important it is for founders to do this, but don't just go in a corner and write your strategic plan. You really need to be thoughtful about how you engage your stakeholders, uh, your customers. Uh, and in our case, it was super helpful to have some guidance uh, both at the top end from, from our board, which really has supported us in our strategic planning, but also from our youth network, you know, listening to what was important for young people uh, in the network, what was important to our staff at all levels, so that we could create a really engaging strategic plan. Um, and uh, kind of the humorous part about that is it just got approved on March 2nd, literally 10 days before COVID hit. Uh, and that's where these next slides uh, or these next bullet points are relevant. We've really tried to do a, a pivot into digital to take advantage of our strategic uh, ambitions uh, as best we can during COVID times. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, been, uh, uh, it's been really uh, fruitful to go through these things. There's even been some other things that have affected us. Uh, for example, the equity, diversity, inclusion, and anti-racism stuff that's and uh, br brought to the surface in the last few months uh, has a huge intersection with mental health. And we're really trying to embed a lot of that learning, uh, learning into uh, all of our programmatic work. But again, as a founder, you've got to step back. You've got to make sure that you have good governance. Uh, you have transparency with your stakeholders. Uh, and in particular, you are following a strategic vision and adjusting your annual plan, but constantly keeping, you know, what's coming down the road uh, first and foremost. And in our case, uh, because we're so youth, uh, youth driven and youth engaged, uh, really keeping those youth perspectives or, or in the general terms, keeping your customer 
uh, front and center uh, so that, so that uh, uh, they are always uh, top of mind uh, in, in your work. Uh, now, uh, how have we grown? So uh, I mentioned the strategy a few times. This is a staff picture. It's a little bit uh, dated now, but uh, I think it was from last fall. And uh, 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 really uh, focusing on the strategy is first and foremost. But also one of the things that we never really thought about in my early entrepreneurial days, but is so vital and is so vital, especially when you're working with a young audience. And that is to have an appealing brand and communications that really resonate with your target audience. And uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting how that's developed with Jack.org. And a lot of it has been by bringing in young people to really lead that work. Uh, because uh, especially with a topic like mental health, it has uh, long been ignored and long been per perceived as something that's always kind of negative and sad. Uh, we've tried to make that uh, a little more empowering and engaging uh, and, and, and trying to, to really appeal not just to the young people who are struggling and supporting them, but really trying to appeal to all young people uh, and those who support them. Uh, so it's really important that you hit a hit a fine mark on the branding and communications. I uh, heard a little bit about the last session. It sounds like you were talking about that, and that is that is hugely important. Um, uh, focus, focus, focus. This again has helped helped us so much at Jack.org, uh, and the board has really been really good to keep me focused. Because when you're having success as a, a new entity, whether it be a charity, a social enterprise, or a, a corporation, whatever it might be, um, you get all kinds of temptations to be to be doing other things. People see you good at at one thing, and they say, "Oh, they'd probably be good at another thing." Uh, and in our case, we've been asked to move into workplace mental health and mental health for younger uh, children, more because uh, we focus on young adults, really, age 15 to 24. Uh, but we get asked to do things for younger people. And all those are important things, but it will affect your ability to do the most good if you don't stay focused on your main uh, core mission. And for us, that is supporting uh, young people, supporting them to be young leaders to, to help educate their peers. Um, I did want to touch again on uh, the board and senior leadership. Uh, you know, for, for quite a while when we incorporated, it was me and two students. Uh, it's a lot different now. So managing through that growth, um, you know, we all ambition, have ambition to grow our enterprises. Managing through that is super important. Uh, and uh, having that oversight, whether that's an advisory group or a formal board of directors, uh, has been incredibly helpful for Jack.org. And as I was able to grow the team and bring on other senior members of our team, um, sharing some of that burden brings other, uh, much smarter than my mind, uh, smart minds to the table to help you lead that organization. And then kind of letting go of the reins a little bit as the founder, I think is, is super important. So, um, so that you're, you're, you're not controlling everything. You're not micromanaging everything. You're really trying, um, uh, trying to delegate more responsibility and authority, which empowers the people that are working for you, but also really helps the organization. Because all organizations that are founder-led are eventually not going to be founder-led if they're successful. Oh, and I'm, a, I'm an old guy, probably compared to most people listening. Uh, uh, just turned 60, actually, last week. Um, so eventually, I'm not going to be leading Jack.org. So that, that succession uh, in building the uh, talent, uh, talented leadership team and empowering them to do the work will, will uh, make what I think is probably the thing that's just as challenging as starting an organization and growing it, and that is uh, transitioning it from being founder-led to professionally led by, by a senior leadership team which I think is uh, hugely important. And then always, again, I wanna say in balance with your audience. In our case, that's in balance with the views and the perspectives of young people that we are serving. That has been super helpful and that has helped us grow 
And it's a constant challenge because, you know, young people are moving in and out of our, our demographic. They're aging out, so to speak, as they graduate uh, through. And uh, so you're constantly dealing with new young people. You've got to bring them on board, get them up to speed uh, and keep evolving how you do that youth leadership piece or whatever it is for your customer base. Uh, I wanted to touch on two different things also, engaging fundraising. So if you're a charity, um, you know, and I've been a charity for, you know, the last 10 years, um, seven years as Jack.org and three years before that, but um, there's all kinds of charities out there. I think there's 90,000 in Canada, something like that, and they're all competing for uh, donor dollars. This is the kindness of the uh, people, individuals or corporations or foundations that are going to provide you with funding and having a range of engaging fundraising approaches has been incredibly valuable for Jack.org. I just can't uh, understate, you know, when we, uh, in those first years, we were, we were raising less than a uh, million dollars. Now we're raising north of $6 million. And to grow that over a fairly short period of time takes all kinds of different uh, fundraising techniques. So if you put that in normal business sense, that's different ways to do business development. You have to have you know, a strong sales team, business development team that uh, really echoes your branding and, and how you go about things. Uh, and then also I mentioned here stewardship of donors. And that's probably not a word that you hear much in the regular business world, stewardship, but we do everything in our power to, to really steward those donors so they really feel part of the organization. You know, and whether that's a, a handwritten uh, a thank you card from me uh, prepared by one of our team and signed and add, with a note added from me or different ways to provide reporting, uh, different ways to, to really get them involved in stewardship events, uh, those sorts of things uh, have paid a huge benefits uh, for, for Jack.org. And, and I think um, are great things for a founder to keep in mind, you know, and um, the other thing I probably should have mentioned is uh, if you're a startup, and you're counting on one source of revenue, that can be the kiss of death. I've seen too many charities out there that really only have uh, one key source of revenue. And if they're a service entity, it might be a government funding, but then it might get, it might get reduced, it might go away, and then where do you stand? We've been fortunate to build um, a very diverse fundraising base, which consists of literally dozens of foundations, dozens of corporations, uh, well over 10,000 individual donors, uh, a couple of government grants. So, so none of our revenue sources accounts for more than about 5% of our total revenue. And I wanna point that out as a lesson learned uh, because it really was hard for us in my early entrepreneurial days in automotive because we, we had one customer uh, for about the first 10 years. And that customer kept asking us to do new things, start new factories, and we grow with them. But it did provide uh, challenges because they were able to more or less dictate our pricing, dictate uh, where we went as an organization because we didn't have many other customers. We were able to deal with that sort of in our second decade. But I think if, if we had known that very early on, we would have resisted some of that, uh, uh, some of that, uh, Kind of pushing we got from the uh, the one customer so this breadth of uh, funding sources I think is 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 super important uh, to talk about uh, Rachel with that I wanted to uh, thank everybody uh, I've got a fun photo if you can see it here this is uh, this is uh, actually our national summit uh, Jack summit in 2019 so we were able to get everybody together there you can see there's about 250 uh, young people from all across Canada uh, attending and a few staff in that photo as well. But this is, uh, this is uh, if, you, if you like, a good example of why our work has been uh, quite powerful as we've been able to get a lot of young people engaged in this topic. And uh, as, we, as most of you probably know, um, mental health is the leading health related uh, cause of death uh, for young people, that being suicide. Um, and uh, it's such an important health, health issue generally for all people because you, you may might not be struggling at a very, very severe, uh, uh, in a very, very severe way, 
but if, you're, if your mental health is not uh, uh, really at a strong point, you're not going to be able to you know, do well at school, thrive in that employment opportunity, uh, really uh, thrive in your relationships and take care of your own kind of well-being. So with that, I wanted to thank you all, Rachel. I don't think we're doing a Q&A at this time, correct? Oh, now you're muted. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, no, I don't think we have a lot of time for Q and A, but that was very efficient. I think this time. But no, all that said, very amazing. All your points are always so good. Just great advice for founders. And I think um, two really big themes today have been one community, and then two adaptation, especially like post COVID. And I feel like you touch on both of those things so well at Jack.org. So. So great to hear from you again. Um, I spot myself in that picture. I don't know if anyone else does. And oh yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, um, I think that's all it that's it from us. Um, is there anything else you want to end off with, Eric? No, I was curious, did the if, if the internet held up okay? I hope it did. Your audio was good the whole time, your face froze a little bit, but we had the slides there, so it was all good. Well, that's probably that's probably a benefit then if my face froze a little bit. Well, uh, thank you so much. I, I want to congratulate uh, you with all the work you're doing with the Startup Zone. I think it's so cool. We actually, at Jack.org, I think I mentioned this last week, we actually started at a uh, one of the large uh, incubators uh, in, in Toronto. When we became an in, uh, independent charity, we started at the, started at the Mars Discovery District. Uh, and we had our space there. Uh, we actually moved over to a charitable uh, incubator called the Sensation. So we are all about this kind of work that you're doing at the Startup Zone. Uh, I think it's an amazing way. I just wish we had it when I was uh, your guys' age. You know, I think there was one course I was able to take at university that had to do with entrepreneurship, and uh, it's really what's going to drive this country ahead. And uh, uh, continue to make Canada uh, a great place in the world. So thank you all, Rachel, and John, and, uh, and all those listening. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of, rest of your day. Awesome. Thanks so much, Eric. Um, enjoy the rest of your vacation. All right. I'll try to get some time off. Take <laughs> all right. care. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Thanks.